Every Pussycat Dolls video ever. Do we leave that in? Yeah. Yo, what's up guys and welcome back. Do you know what this feels like right now? This feels like a tech review. I feel like this is a tech review setup. This is like unbox therapy or something. That's what I feel like right now. It's pretty sick. We are here today. First of all, thanks for watching. Second of all, I'm just gonna share with you some of my top five favorite puzzles that I think would be great for Christmas gifts or holiday gifts if you wanna be politically correct. Uh, either one. Just to be fair, these aren't my favorite puzzles. A lot of my favorite puzzles, like one-offs and stuff like that, but these are the ones that you can get your hands on and I think would make for cool Christmas gifts if you're looking for that. And price ranges from, uh, say, around 10, 15 bucks to uh, a couple hundred bucks, so whatever your budget's into. By the way, if you're looking for any other gifts, even puzzles that I haven't mentioned here, uh, the links below to either Puzzle Master or Art of Play will bring you to a whole bunch of other things that they sell on their sites, which could also be great for stocking stuffers. So without any further ado, uh, ooh, one more ado. I just received the V3 tuck cases. Uh, the cards are coming in tomorrow so I can start filming a trailer for this. And I'm really, really hyped up because the, the tuck case, nicest version of first playing cards ever, by the way, not hyping it up. This is very true. I'll let you see for yourself in uh, in a couple days, but I'm heading Saturday uh, to go film on location somewhere and hopefully bring you that video by next week. So anyways, let's get into the video. So number five, this is number five for me. Uh, this, you might recognize this little this little beastie. Uh, one of the first puzzles that I did on video, uh, the video actually blew up at like 10 million hits, which is super weird. I think one of the reasons for that is because innately when you have anything made of glass and something's trapped inside, it automatically becomes like an impossible object, which, which I think is really cool because this is this is super cheap. I think 10 or 20 bucks, I'm not exactly sure, but pretty cheap. A fun little game of dexterity and sort of patience. You have to unscrew the nut from the bolt in order to extract the, uh, the wooden stem. You do have this cotter pin down here and this ball as well, which will help you uh, get everything done. So a real test of patience here. This isn't something that you're gonna solve in five minutes. Be alone because you will drive whoever is uh, next to you absolutely nuts or drive yourself nuts, whatever, whatever's more fun. That's my number five. Number four, numero cuatro, numafia, numero quatre is, this is the Hanayama box. Uh, so Hanayama produces really cool puzzles. Not only do they produce cool puzzles, one of the really cool things about Hanayama is that they are all affordable. That's sort of, I wouldn't say motto, but it's it's kind of what they represent is they want to be able to share these amazingly uh, designed puzzles with the world. And obviously they don't want you to pay a fortune for them. So these you can find pretty much everywhere. I left the link below. Uh, but this one particularly is really cool. Kind of a maze puzzle. So what you have to do, and this one's not at the start. I believe I played around with this one already. You're maneuvering the ring through the box. So it starts off at the start point, which, which would be here. It's really cool because there's so many different entry points you can uh, you can really go nuts with this. So here we go. Now, if I don't stop now, I'm gonna be caught up with this for uh, for a very long time. I don't believe that's where it goes in. You can play around with it yourself. I won't solve it here, but a cool object nonetheless. And what's cool is that you understand the premise just looking at the puzzle. It's not like, it's not like some obscure puzzle where you don't even know what the goal is. This goal is very clear. It even says start right there. And that's where it starts through. And that's, I guess, where also you have to end it. That's where the ring has to be. So a cool thing. And the cool thing about this is, uh, you know, even for a stocking stuffer or you can hang it on the tree or whatever you choose to do with it. I just think it looks really sleek. Uh, the, it's all made of metal here. So I don't know, looks pretty cool. Definitely a really cool gift. Uh, you can give someone who's just starting off in into a puzzles or just someone who wants to, you know, uh, pass the time. Number four. Number three, uh, this one is a special one because it's not necessarily a puzzle. I mean, it is, but it isn't. And, I, and I've reviewed this before. This is the Cryptex. Now you might uh, recognize this from something like in the Da Vinci Code. I personally use it for a magic trick when I'm performing on stage. So what's cool about this is, yes, this can be a gift in itself, but it can also uh, contain a gift, which I think is really cool. So if you're, if you're lazy and just wanna give 20 bucks to someone, well, this is a cool way to harness or to, uh, to put that 20 bucks in or anything else, a piece of paper with a note on it or any small item, maybe another puzzle. What's cool about this, you can actually choose the word that opens it. So in this case, I chose the word world. 
Uh, once you open it, you can unscrew the ends and rearrange the letters to fit any five letter word that you want. Uh, so maybe you can give that special someone a clue. That clue will lead them to a word which will hopefully uh, lead to the contents of this cryptex. So that's a really cool puzzle. Now it comes in different uh, shades. You can get this one here, which has the white, the white letters, or there's also one that has like gold letters, which I think is cool also. I actually might pick that one up. Next, when you think of like, you know, like National Treasure, Da Vinci Code, or any of those cool Indiana Jones type, you know, puzzles, you're thinking of definitely something in, in this scope. Number two, this this is my number two. This is one of my favorite Hanayama puzzles ever made. This is the marble, the cast marble by Hanayama. Now this thing looks like an alien relic. It kind of opens like this. You don't really know what's going on. And the ball in the middle spins around. Now this is made of four pieces and the four pieces come apart. As you can see here, it takes a very, a very satisfying move to be able to slip these two apart. And that's one of my, that's one of the reasons why I love this puzzle so much because there's that satisfying rush of endorphin when you, when you figure this one out. It's just so smooth and buttery. I'll do it actually here for you live. You gotta kind of line up that line. Now the reason I'm showing you is because this is a, this is a, these are ideas for gifts. And so if you buy this for someone and if they're too frustrated to figure it out, you can actually show them. So once you line up that line with the cracks here, uh, these slide apart. And when they slide apart, you now have four individual pieces. Now we could take, we could take those little balls out of there, those half spheres out of there. Uh, and then in order to line them up again, you simply, you have to line up these little parts and slip it right back in, which is ooh so satisfying. I mean, it really is. And it looks cool. It's, it's just a cool keepsake that you can keep around. Funny story with this is um, when I was in Vegas hanging out with David Copperfield a couple months ago, we were at his hangar and uh, he's got this really cool place where he keeps his private jet. And he's got like a little, even like a little museum in the entrance of the hangar. And he gives you this really sick tour. And on the shelf, uh, on the on the bar, he has like this bar area, was a whole bunch of Hanayama puzzles still wrapped in their, in their original packaging. Obviously no one's played with them. So I snagged this one off the counter and I brought it to the restaurant where we went afterwards. We all had pizza and stuff. And then uh, I showed David, I actually gave this to David to uh, to try and solve and he was just getting frustrated with it. And I had to show him how it worked. But once I did, he was like, he was really elated. It was like one of those really neat things where he's like, wow, I finally understand the complexity of some of these really simple looking puzzles and how satisfying they can be to solve. So neat little story. Uh, that's the cast marble. And that is my number two. Number one is a two parter. This is a two-parter. This is probably, these are probably the most expensive of all of the puzzles. So if you're looking to get a gift for someone who's maybe a little bit more familiar with puzzles, a little bit more advanced in the puzzle uh, world, or if you're simply looking to uh, torture someone mentally, you can get them one of these two. So this is the uh, Dan Lock. A B and the B lock uh, made by the same person. This actually was the first original puzzle that I've ever solved on this channel. So this is what started this whole crazy ride uh, into the puzzle world was this one. And the story behind this was this was just sitting on a shelf at uh, my friend's uh, warehouse at Art of Play. And uh, as you can see, there's like a there's like a key looped through, which is something you don't really see often. So. And then there was a broken key and there's another little piece that's on the desk over there. There's another little piece that comes with this that's broken off. So you're left with this visual, which is a super bizarre thing to look at because you're like, two things are wrong. One, that in itself is a mystery. Two, uh, a broken key and then a lock. So we all know how locks work. This is an ordinary object transformed into an extraordinary object by the fact that it's a puzzle. And that really threw me for a loop. Uh, when I saw it, I had to have it. I had to figure out what the heck was going on. How is this a puzzle? A puzzle in my head was like either a Rubik's cube or a jigsaw. There was nothing else. And so when I saw this, it really got my imagination going and, uh, and kind of felt like this was like some secret object that a double agent would have or something. So these are handmade, this as well. So this is like its little brother. Uh, you can find both of these below, I believe. And they both have similar similar ways of solving it. This one is a little bit different, a little bit more simple, but don't underestimate it, it's still hard nonetheless. You're looking at this and you're thinking, well, that's easy, key goes in there. Obviously that's not right and there's something there's something more to this. And they're sequential discovery puzzles, which means that within this you're going to discover other tools that will allow you to open it, which is really, really sick. 
Plus, they look really cool. Like this captured my imagination instantly. Uh, they could be stocking stuffers, obviously very expensive stocking stuffers. So, or just, you know, figure out how the lock works, maybe lock something else into it. And then they have to figure out how this works before they get to their present. I don't know, be creative with it, but very, very cool if you're looking to get that special someone, something a little bit extra as a puzzle, you cannot go wrong with this. Trust me, any puzzler would be more than ecstatic to have both of these in their collection. So check them out. I left the link below to those as well. And folks, that's all. It's Friday. I'm taking the weekend, as I said, to go uh, film on location. I'll give you a hint, I'm going to Bermuda. So I'm so excited to actually have the deck in my hands. I have the box right now and the deck's coming tonight. This is gonna be, this is without a doubt, my favorite deck that I've ever produced. I know what you're gonna say. Who's on every on every deck you produce? Well, that's the goal. I try to outdo myself every time, and I have successfully done so this time. I think. Can't wait for you guys to see it. By the way, if you guys want more sneak peeks into what's happening with the V3s, I have an account on Instagram called First Dot Shop, which is also uh, my website where you can buy merch like this and where you'll be able to purchase uh, the playing cards once they get released. So that's First Dot Shop or on Instagram at First Dot Shop. Check it out. Thanks for watching like, subscribe, all that good stuff, and we'll see you on the next video. Peace.